Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Pursuing Results. This is the place where we interview successful people about one book that changed their life. We've got a very, very high-level guest with us here who's done a lot of stuff, and uh, he's got a really interesting book to share. It's one that I've read in the past, and it made a major impact on him, and it's still one that he, that he kind of pulls out and goes to. Uh, it's one of those go-to books where there's just uh, some really good nuggets in there that apply to almost everything in all kinds of different situations. But we're also going to go super deep on marketing, especially internet marketing marketing and how to grow your business, whatever business you have, uh, through online marketing. So it's going to be a lot of fun. First, let's bring in the uh, the junior grandmaster himself yeah. in the co-pilot seat, Greg McDaniel. Greg, what's up today? What is up, buddy? So long time no see. I mean, I go three days without talking to this guy. It feels like a li freaking lifetime. But, uh, you know, we were, we were joking around. Matt loves to, likes to pick on me as the disabled co-host because I'm dyslexic. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, as that, uh, I don't quote <laughs> read books. I listen to them. So now I am yeah, something. Just call me Matt. I'm make fun of people with learning disabilities. That's fine. Whatever. Dot Thanks, com. Greg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Matt, he makes fun of dyslexic kids. Dot com. Oh, All right. I'm going to buy that right now and give that to All you. Right, good. Everything back let's, to you on that. <laughs> let's bring in our special guest. So, Dr. Jeff Langmay. Jeff, how's it going today? It's going It's going great. And, and for the record, I will also say, Greg, listening does count. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> oh, man, in your face. <laughs> All right. Hey, any any way you got to get it in there, any way you got to get the books into your brain, that's the way to do it, right? Just them in there. Just that's right. one ear phone at a time, get in there. All right. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> if, you are, if you are watching this, make sure to hit subscribe on YouTube, and then if you want the audio versions uh, between your ears where we so belong, make sure to hit uh, you know subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher and all that good stuff. But uh, Jeff, let's start with you. So uh, I want you to give kind of the 60-second bio on who you are, where you are, and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So I, by trade, I'm a chiropractor. So I am a chiropractor by trade, but I've kind of branched off as time has gone on. So uh, I have a few different businesses and business entities that I'm involved in day to day. I work for the world's largest spine surgery company. Ooh. So day to day, I'm reading MRIs, interacting with patients, making decisions on the future. Uh, corporate development, things like that. So it's a, kind of a, a corporate gig by day, so to speak. But in addition to that, and kind of where we connected more, is I, I own a company called the Evidence-Based Chiropractor, which is a product service company, uh, business to business, not only my products and services to chiropractors, but they are products and services for chiropractors to then go B2B with medical doctors in their community to bolster and build their practice. Uh, additionally, I own and founded a, a company called Cairo Office Coverage, which basically provides chiropractic office coverage solutions or staffing service for professional level or chiropractor specific, and, and that's U.S. Wow. only for Cairo Office Coverage. Evidence-based chiropractor is worldwide. I also write in chiropractic trade journals. I wrote a book regarding marketing chiropractic, mm -hmm. and I speak around the country regarding conservative care and a variety of topics related to healthcare. Good lord, yeah. man. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just keep going. Yeah, exactly. is, is there an end? Is there, is there an end? No, there's no end. And then, and then speaking on top of that, doing all kinds of, <laughs> yeah. kinds of fun stuff. So, yeah, so me and Jeff connected because I booked him on the Entrepreneurial Chiropractor Podcast. So if you're listening to this and you're in the chiropractic industry, go first of all, go listen to that. Not now, but listen to this first, then go <laughs> listen to that. Later, exactly. That's first, then later. Uh, but anyway, so the, the, there was something that was really interesting. When I came across the evidence-based chiropractor for the first time, and I, I, I think I have my brain wrapped around it, and if I understand it correctly, it's awesome, and it's a great example of thinking about marketing in terms of relationship building and thinking about them in terms of multiple steps. So Jeff, if, if I understand it correctly, you're teaching and providing materials to chiropractors so that they can go out and provide value to the medical doctors that they might be connected with in order to build kind of a referral network. Do I understand that right? 100% correct. So okay. what we try to, and it's research based, a lot of what we're doing is you know really built on relationship, built on integrity, and built on evidence-based practice. So it's research-based content that can be white labeled for each individual member that mm -hmm. they can then use as a product essentially or a value add to their positions in their community and then we built out the system on how to implement, how to go about it, and how to get those touchstone points as time goes on. So yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I love it. And there's there's a guy. So we've had a previous guest on named Scott Hudspeth, who does something very similar in the mortgage industry, mm -hmm. uh, and he's helped one of his clients go from what was it 150 million to almost a billion in loans yeah. over the last few years. And one of the things that he does is he runs a mastermind for real estate agents 
he charges mortgage brokers that he's connected with a very small fee and then that gives them all the content that they need and, and a reason to reach out to their realtor referral relationships and bring them to this web this mastermind that he does every week very very similar concept but it's all it all goes back to that same marketing mindset of look let's figure out who are the key relationships and then let's build the relationships through actual value not by just reaching out and trying to take them out to coffee with nothing in it for them so I love I love that approach because it, it's it just it shows right away that you have a, like a good solid grasp on not just first order marketing like hey we're gonna run some ads and get some people but it's very like second second and third stage or second order thinking right it's it's seeing it in stages or steps yeah thank you yeah I, I agree I think it's it's an interesting model because not only from my business perspective am I trying to acquire clients and uh, acquire people that I can help but it's it's then about giving them the tools and resources and systems to then build their businesses. So um, and a lot of it stemmed from I won't go too deep on on this aspect of it, but a lot of it stemmed from my personal experience where I didn't have an idea for the evidence-based chiropractor. Like I want to start a business. I was a practicing chiropractor in a multidisciplinary group, and I just stumbled upon how do I build a relationship with this guy because I need to, meaning yeah. a medical doctor in my yeah. group. So I started to learn and see trends. And then I noticed, of course, a great opportunity specifically in the chiropractic industry where that multidisciplinary relationship isn't really brought to the forefront. So that sort of stimulated the gears as time went on, and it certainly has grown, uh, grown excuse me, and, and uh, it's been an interesting journey from there. But the, the impetus for it was, was, it was interesting. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. You yeah, know, though, Go a ahead. lot of the times, like in, uh, in 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 any business, like in my business when I was growing up in, in the real estate industry, you know, you, the time of growth is when you find when it, when there's need, like in yours. You know, you're like, huh, I need this, so let's go figure it out and do it. And then other people jump on the jump on board with you, going, oh my god, that's a fantastic move. How'd you figure it out? You're like, because I had to. I mean, there, I need to grow from here to here, so I mean, I had to bridge that gap. So here it is. And no no time do you grow when you're comfortable. And that's that's the interesting part about it. You know, the time of uh, mm -hmm. birth of any new business is you know time of need. Yep. Yeah, well, it's a great, great way to look at uh, pain or problems mm -hmm. in your business. Is look, if I'm having this problem, so is everybody else, and if I can solve it, and if I can solve it better than they can, I'm going to be way ahead of all of them. Yep, absolutely. Kind of like that product you and I are, Matt, you and I are building together that we're going to come out with, and we're bridging a gap in an industry, mm -hmm. and that's the cool part about it. There, there are opportunities all around you at all times. You get to learn how to, how to look at them. I had a guy. I was having a beer with him. He's been a buddy of mine for I don't know two decades or something, and he's one of the more the nefarious individuals. He's a farmer, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, he told me one time, I haven't seen him in probably 15 years, but he told me one time, and it's always stuck with me, and Jeff, this reminds me of you. There are, he's like, Greg, there's money flying above your head at all times. All you have to do is figure out how to reach up and grab some of it. And I'm like, huh. That's a really good way of looking at things because there's stuff all around you, you know, wants and needs that other people may have. You can just fix that problem for them. Yeah. 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 Very cool. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think the biggest thing, especially, I mean, this kind of goes without saying, I know with the, with the audience that we're speaking to, but especially when you have a product that's real, you know, I mean, that, that's, that provides yeah. actual value. So, I mean, you can yeah. make a dollar selling a, a piece of junk, right? I mean, there's plenty of people that do it. It happens every day. It happens all day, every day. But when you really develop something that was spurned or spurred through opportunity and through your development and through a pain point that you had and you can learn from it and then you know when the stars align that there also is a, a market opportunity for that that's like the best you know that's the combination that's like the holy grail that's the combo yeah. that everybody yeah. wants yeah. so it's it's crazy how many people don't actually take that next step as far as turning that into a potential business idea but it's also crazy perhaps in some ways about how much we see when that wasn't the impetus or start of it when it just was an idea of I want to have a company there's no pain point or anything else but maybe I can make a buck so I think the sweet spot is when the pain points hit and the market matches that for an opportunity then you have a great chance for yourself to build a great product it's a, lot of, like a lot of people don't have the chutzpah you know, to actually go out and do it though so they may have a good idea but they just don't ever have the balls to go out and make it actually happen. Then, you know, yeah. Congratulations to everyone who actually does do it. I mean, it is a le leap of faith because you never know what the market's really going to bear and what you're bringing because I mean, you don't have a crystal ball. But when you go out and do it, and then you have the opportunity to change lives. Yeah, but the marketplace doesn't need to be there. Yeah. Well, before we talk three hours on marketing and don't get to the book at all, <laughs> uh, let's, let's talk about the book. It's not How Good You Are, It's How Good You Want to Be by Paul Arden. So tell me a little bit about kind of when you encountered the book for the first time and what your, maybe not what your business was like, uh, but just kind of what, what stage was your life at and, uh, and what, what immediate impact did the book have on you? 
Yeah, so when I first came about the book, it, it was at a time when I was in the early stages of growing the evidence-based chiropractor. So I was working in a regional multidisciplinary group. I had, I had started to build those relationships. I knew what the evidence-based chiropractor was going to kind of be or what I thought it could be, but I was in the early developmental stages, and I was just reading you know, my standard uh, kind of uh, allotment of books that I go through each month or quarter or year. So I kind of caught, it caught my eye because of the name. I mean, the name is cool. It's not how good you are, it's how good you want to be. So it was sort of maybe either inspirational or aspirational that I, mm -hmm. that I decided to pick it up. And I also noticed that it was very short. Like it was, I'm going to have it in front of me here, but, you know, it's, it's 125 pages, a small book, you know, with, with a lot of big print, as we talked previously. So, um, <laughs> so that's, you know, I picked it up at that point, and it's just, you know, we kind of touched on it uh, Pre, but it was it's resonated with me throughout different times. So at that point in time, I just thought the ideas. Every time I read a page, the other thing about it is it's not linear. So you can just open a page and get an idea, or get a quote, or get you know it's. So I loved it because I would break it open and I'd almost always it would spur uh, a twig on a tree for me. So it would be something where I would spur an idea, and it's something that I still go back to this to this day to really spur ideas, not tactics. It's not, you know, how to you know, craft this great Instagram post, obviously, but it's more broad and top level, like 30,000 foot view of, of marketing and, and things like that. Do you have an example of what your latest one was, Jeff, so that the listeners can kind of have an idea of what, what, what this book has to offer? Yeah, that's a, that's a really, really good question. And we kind of touched on it. I'll, I'll see if I can actually grab the... the the page real quick. I actually held this up to, again to you pre-show. It's a line with a, through, a, through two pages with one line of text and it is, well, you've got to draw the line somewhere. That's all it says. And it's an interesting <laughs> thing because for me, it's like very abstract, right? Like what the heck yeah. is that? But I can pick that up and for me, it is about, well, I am I'm in the process of hiring people for the evidence-based chiropractor and chiro office coverage. I've been putting it off for a long time. I've, I've kind of been growing and, and kind of outsourcing, but I was reluctant to really get, get over the hump and really go all in on building the, you know, building uh, the business in, in that capacity. And so just reading that, you've got, well, you've got to the, draw the line somewhere. It's a matter of, hey, my time is only, I only have so much time. I'm already a very busy guy. And there's other people that have skill sets that are not only complementing to me, but might be better than me in some mm -hmm. cases. So why don't I draw the line and start by building out my team with a little bit more efficiency and a little bit more effectiveness than just um, the way I've been doing it. Yeah, yeah, it's always it's true. I mean, you got. I mean, I'm thinking about something right now in my own personal life where, like, damn it, you just got to draw the freaking line and be done with it. And so, I mean, like, like you said, it's it's nonlinear. So, I mean, just reading that right there, I'm like. You make a very valid point, sir. That's why I'm actually not going to get an audible co copy, Matt. I'm actually going to get a physical physical copy. That's only, <laughs> only because, as we discussed before we started broadcasting, they do not have an audible copy. So <laughs> before you knock yourself no. off your chair by patting yourself on the back. All right, so Jeff, let's get into... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. So, uh, so what are some of the things that you've done with with the evidence evidence based chiropractor to actually grow it? Because I think there's probably a lot of lessons there in terms of how you've used online marketing that other entrepreneurs, coaches, speakers, consultants can probably learn a lot from what you've done. Because you've, you've, it sounds like you've tried a lot of stuff, and you you and I have read a lot of the same stuff. Jay Abraham, Dan Kennedy, all the, all that good stuff. So, what are some of the things that you took from those types of books and applied to the evidence based chiropractor? Yeah. So my the the overarching theme, and then we'll go deeper. Is number one, we and we kind of touched on it, number one, have a good product. You know, have a product that has market fit and that solves a pain point for your consumer, and that is legit. I mean, I think that's the number one starting point. Number two is build the audience. So everything I do is about building the audience, and that segments down, of course. I mean, my audience can segment down from the broad base of what, like who visits the evidencebasedchiropractor.com. So who's coming to my website? Where are they coming from? What are they interacting with? Then, of course, then you split down to email. So am I building my email list? Do I have a good uh, uh, landing page? Am I welcome at? Am I using free reports and guides? Am I using video? Uh, how am I going about building my audience as far as email? Because even though, you know, and again, everybody that's listening to this podcast knows, you know, late 90s, you know, 80% open rates, 40% click-through, thing of the past. 
Yeah. But there still is no better, in my opinion, perhaps no better value than a, a robust yet highly segmented and niche, so to speak, email list. I'm mm -hmm. still rolling on 35%, 40% open rates, easily 8% mm -hmm. click-through rates on my email to my email list, but it's because I don't I email them high quality, high value items, and also I make sure that I'm pro, uh, consistently providing that value. And of course, then audience in for me then trickles down more to social. Of course, you know, yeah. Facebook feeds, email, vice versa, yeah. back and forth, and then your Instagram and things like that. But I have predominantly focused uh, product focused, but then audience focused because anything to build the audience. In my opinion, your sales or your clientele is always going to come as a direct result of, of really the size of the audience. So I focus heavily on that and then all the ancillary components, whether it's written word, blog post, authoring a book, writing for trade magazines, that's the social proof that as you go down your list or your, you know, the, the thought process as far as the hierarchy of, or fallacies that people would think of. They don't want risk. They want hope, not fear. You can kind of work your way down those things. Um, social proof is important, but ultimately, what are you what are you selling, and who do you want to sell it to, and get as many of those people as possible uh, onto your list. And if you start delivering value and have good copywriting and marketing, well, ultimately you're going to turn things. Yeah. How are you How are you building your list, though? Are you, I mean, do you, a lot of people are going to be looking at this potential and be going, "Well, good, I'm going to go buy a big old list and then just blast out to them." I'm pretty yeah. sure that's the worst possible idea you could ever do, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean. Would you grow it by giving away like uh, infographics, like download an infographic, download an ebook? You know, how would you grow that list organically? The best, what you've seen to be the best. Yeah. So for me, I, I, I tier that two ways, and there's a couple ways that I haven't really dove into. That's really on my 2017 agenda. That's more webinar based and things like that. My experience and what I have done has been opt-in landing pages for. Um, Essentially, and this is a little bit dated now, but I think, it's, I think there's still so much value there in a PDF that actually delivers value. And basically, some of them are like chapters out of my book. So how do you go about meeting a medical doctor? And give them something real. Like, you know, mm -hmm. so I love, I still love landing pages with some sort of video, PDF, some sort of buy-in that actually they care about, number one. Number two... Uh, opt-in is any speaking engagement whether small big or indifferent make sure that if you don't have a direct giveaway make sure that you're getting people's email addresses that sit in and listen to you speak that's an extremely easy way to go about it and the third way to go about it of course is make sure your website's optimized so yeah. whether you have a pop-up box when people are trying to leave I don't care how you do it but make sure that you're having uh, basically that pop-up box as I would call it or your welcome mat come down now you don't want to, again you don't want to like you know piss everybody off that's coming onto your website <laughs> so you got to be ginger with that but there's so many oh. fantastic programs and there's so much research behind that at this point in time that are literally millions of subscribers deep um, yeah. I love the and I'll I'll kind of plug it because I use it yeah. I love the App Sumo and the Sumo Me yeah. products Noah what he's doing down in Austin um, I think their products are the best and and I love that and that generates if we kind of dive down and geek out on it a little bit, I mean, my web page probably generates, uh, between all of the layers of opt-in, I probably have close to an 8% email wow. conversion rate on web visitors. So mm -hmm. now you can just start doing, now it just becomes mathematic, right? So yeah. I know if I put an ad on Facebook, my cost per click is going to be X number of cents, which I can get down to actually 10 cents per click or wow. less. But hmm. it's again, it's all about segmenting and targeting. Then I know at X amount of people driven to my website, 10%, 8% are going to get to my email list. I know my email list turns this much. Now you can just back end and really or front end your marketing, having a pretty darn good idea of every conversion step along the way, and you know your cost per acquisition before you've even gotten started. And of course, as you drive ads, you might lose that on the back end. But you've got to drive until you see that sweet spot or the plateau. You know what? I am I am an absolute sucker for an ebook download. I'm like, ooh, ebook? Ooh, here's my email. <laughs> and then I bitch in the morning, like, why do I have so many freaking junk emails? Oh yeah, Fred, <laughs> because you're a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> and we all do that. In fact, I have a special special <laughs> Gmail that I use for those that are not that I'm taking a chance on that are not valuable enough to go into my regular work email. But uh, yeah, I mean that was 
so I'm curious about this because, and and if you know this terminology, the lead magnet from the whole uh, digital marketer and, and all the amazing work that, that they do, um, but whatever that chunk of value is that you're offering in, in exchange for the email, that is one of the hardest things to get right. I've heard multiple people say that, that you can have the rest of the funnel right, but that lead magnet, that chunk of value has to be so good and so out of proportion with the email that you're asking them for. Otherwise, it triggers a whole host of horrible problems like, you know, um, your Facebook ads being too expensive to be sustainable, and that's just the basics of it. But uh, so, like for me and Greg, it took us, I mean, what, before we came up with your Greg's favorite scripts? Um, Long time. Email opt in. Yeah, it was, we did the podcast for something like eight months or something before we really felt out the audience and figured out what they responded to. Um, I still haven't found that with my other real estate business with Jeff. We've gone through uh, four or five different lead magnet options for two different types of audiences and still haven't like hit that thing that people just like gravitate towards. So Jeff, like, have you experimented with a ton of stuff? Have you found one thing that really blows everything else out of the water or are you still tinkering? Uh Always tinkering, right? So, I mean, because as, yeah. as time goes on, every ad loses its efficiency, even the best ad. So, I think it's always tinkering. I've pro and I don't know where this compares. This is a good. This is a good question, actually, because I don't know where it compares industry wide. And I'm not a guy who's spending a thousand dollars a day. Like I'm talking, yeah. you know, five hundred to five hundred. I probably average five hundred bucks a month in Facebook ads. So, not yeah. that much, comparatively speaking. Yeah. But it, it's I'm I'm fortunate to have a very tight audience too. So that helps, you know. I understand I have some advantages with that. I've probably run 150, 200 different ads. Um, Holy cow! <laughs> um, <Jeez>. So, <laughs> yeah, with, with 150 to 200 different offers, like different pieces of content that you're testing no, out. No, no, okay. probably yeah, how many a, different pieces of content. Are we talking? Uh, co core pieces of content, a dozen. Okay. Yeah, yeah probably about a, a dozen yeah. core pieces of content. Um, and some of them react better than others, but I think the, the major thing is that content line, again, it has to be like, it has to be valuable and people's tolerance to the, um, to the you know, to clickbait has obviously grown less. So like, here's a, here's, a, here's a great example. So when I'm talking about a piece of content that's, let's say, my report, the MD meeting, I, I actually don't, which this could be against some norms, I don't title it five ways to boost your MD meetings by 100% in the next eight days, which kind of hits all of your time. <laughs> but right. But very I, Dan Kennedy-esque. <laughs> what I have found with my market is it works best if I say, you know, MD meeting. You boost your, you know, learn the step-by-step -step guide to how you can boost your referrals starting today. Now, that's a t slight, it's mm -hmm. nuanced. It's yeah. not as, the CTA is not as strong. But it's something that is, for my audience, seems to resonate better because they want that value. They want to know how. And they mm -hmm. don't want – they're going to be repelled by something that sounds too good to be true. They're business owners. They're timely. And this isn't a necessarily a, a course or something like that. It is something that is very – a systematic approach to doing things. So I think as yeah, long like as your, your content piece highlights actually what you're doing with your product or service and it also again it's market fit so it's gonna depend certain things more sensational is gonna work in some markets probably more direct to consumer sensational I'm gonna yeah. guess is gonna be a little bit better whereas business to business you still want some draw but I think a little bit less on the sensational front establishes a little bit more credibility and offsets and at this point now even offsets against other Facebook ads <laughs> Yeah, and I think, uh, like, so you mentioned, like, sensational. I, I see the direct, yeah, anything that's direct to consumer, and, and of course, in, so with me and Greg's podcast, it's very much aimed at the average, in, in this case, real estate agent, uh, which is very much, it's it just, like, it's technically B2B, but, man, it's close to being B2C. Like, it's yeah. such a, it's, I mean, we're talking hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of people. They're all low level. They're not business owners. They don't know, they don't have a clue. Uh, so it's very similar to, to direct-to-consumer. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious, like, it just my, um, my guess would be just from what I've done is that if you look at if you're going after like a B2B market that's like that where it's almost direct to consumer type uh, like tactics work really well with them but the business owners they want the strategy does that make sense like they want they want it in depth they don't like the sensational stuff because it comes off as uncredible so you can't get away with that as much um, so does that does that kind of ring true 
I, I think so, and I think it's also about building out, I mean, some of it's just about pre-building out your brand, so it's, you know, when somebody searches me online, if they're like, who's this joker? Like, they don't, you know, but they're <laughs> going to see that there's a lot of stuff there, and it's, yeah. you know, so it's, it's about taking the time. I think the other thing that sometimes, you know, especially with a new business idea, any of us can get so excited about a new business idea, but, you know, as you kind of talked about, you have multiple, you guys have worked on multiple products, multiple businesses. You have multiple podcasts. You've mm -hmm. built your brands as time has gone on and continue to do so today, and I think that can't be lost in the era of flash. You know, there's plenty of flash out there. And yeah. everybody's got to be flashy every once in a while. Mm -hmm. But making sure that you're, you know, to kind of go into another book that we won't even dive into, but you'll make sure you're putting in your 10,000 hours, so to speak. Yeah, make yeah. sure that you put in the time. Basically, have actual specific market expertise. And if you don't know, spend the time before product launch gaining market expertise. So when somebody reaches out to you, you can either say, I don't know, or give them a real credible answer. Because I just think that the you know like it's I'm a big boxing guy and it's like um, you know class shows through over time you know as twelve rounds goes on the better fighter kind of right, shows right, the belt right. time. and I I think the same is true with a lot of businesses we're always evolving you have to start somewhere no doubt about it um, but I also think it's important to really get the subject matter expertise because it helps so much with the content pieces it just mm -hmm. helps so much yeah. with what you're putting out there so. You know, yeah, it, it makes a huge difference. It really does. A lot of the comments we I get when I co I do free coaching around the country and around the world every single night, uh, to some agent for free, and they all go, "God, Greg, so unbelievable that you you you're like an actual agent, like you know what I'm going through." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's the biggest problem in most industries. We just got a lot of motivational speakers up there doing jack shit, making you feel real warm and fuzzy. Then going home, you're like, what the hell did I just take away? I feel good." But is there anything I can actually put into my business? That's why you know Matt, why you and I are so successful on Real Estate Uncensored, because they can take any, they can take parts of our, our of our content, of any of our shows, and they can put it in their business and make money. And so Jeff, I, I'm on board with you 100%, man. That that is a spot. Yeah, that's, and the reason that we can do that is because it's we're both. We're both in the industry, or have been in the industry. We both understand it at an intimate level, and that's man, that's coming from the outside and just looking to start a business because you see a market and you see an opportunity. There, man, that's that's. I don't want to say it's a recipe for failure because some entrepreneurs are just that good that they can pull it off. But man, you better be good, <laughs> and you yeah, better be able to learn quickly because that's really. I mean, you still have to get the ten thousand hours, or you have to get that level of mastery. You just either you're going to do it slowly or you're going to do it quickly, uh, which that that's a whole other yeah. Like uh, we, th those are some other books we can go into. But anyway, uh, so Jeff, remind people of where they can uh, reach you real quick before we have a yeah. couple final questions. So anybody can reach Jeff at the evidence -based chiropractor .com, uh, easiest email to reach me at basically anything you can imagine backslash the evidence -based chiropractor .com, <laughs> uh, you, can find, you can find me at so uh, at the evidence -based chiropractor .com, at Cairo office coverage .com, facebook .com backslash the evidence -based chiropractor and when I say evidence there's no D on the end of that it's just evidence not evidenced. Okay. <laughs> makes, now I feel like I'm saying it. So now that's probably even more confusing. But uh, oh, that's funny. All right. Yeah. But I, 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 didn't, really I didn't get the joke. I'm dyslexic. What? <laughs> <laughs> I really welcome any anybody that wants wants to reach out and, and kind of and can kind of jam on things. Don't hesitate because uh, I, I'd love to chat. And you know, some one other thing I, I I certainly would like to touch on is really the audience sharing component, which I think is a big thing. Um, that I've put a lot of focus on uh, in the last few months and really am ramping up right now is you know find you know find the people that have sister or brother um, uh, organizations where you share I mean this sounds obviously very logical I know there's a lot of people that starting to talk about this right now but if you find somebody that shares an audience with who you'd like to have as your audience or you mix members with them um, and their product or service might be slightly different it could even be same ballpark don't hesitate to reach out to them. The, the easiest way to build your audience is to co-share an audience. So whether it's a mutual webinar, yeah. whether it's cross-posting on Facebook, whether it's guest podcasting, whether it's being a guest on the podcast, whether it's just sharing valuable content to their audience and vice versa. I mean, yeah. it doesn't. you're not always going to be the biggest fish for what you do, but if you find somebody that's either equitable or maybe even a little bit larger, then I think there's plenty of opportunities as both people want further exposure and audience growth. 
and especially the more highly refined your audience is, the more value that the, there is in turn to the next guy or gal. Yeah, so sure. um, I, I think that's a huge that's a huge like overlooked maybe, but kind of not. But I think it's a huge strategy once you get rolling is that you don't need to necessarily affiliate out your list the second that it gets to a certain size. You don't necessarily need to just like slam people over the head, product, product, product. But what you can do is start delivering content and delivering uh, co-authored, co-ventured content uh, you know, back and forth. And I think that's just a, a, a win for the audience, number one, which is what you should always be after. But number two, it's going to cross-pollinate and you're going to get great exposure. And also, you don't have to go for the biggest fish out there to stand on their shoulders to grow. Go, go, go with a guy or gal that's maybe equal to the size of you, maybe a little bit bigger than are you doubling down, and you continually stair-step your way up that whole, that whole system. Um, question for you. I want to get your opinion on this. I have a, I have a theory. I want to see if you can you zombify it for me and try to kill it. Um, I'm thinking about Facebook ads, but I'm thinking about doing them a totally different way. I'm thinking about doing like a short videos on specific topics and running them for a week, you know, for seven days at five bucks a, 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 a day. And mm-hmm. instead of having a stagnant ad, but having them get to know me, my personality, the way I talk, my, you know, my little nuances, would you think that would be a good idea or would you stay with the static ads? I would absolutely do it the way you're, that you suggest. I would make a hierarchy and then I would pixel and retarget based on that. So I would, mm-hmm. so I would make sure... Uh, I think that, that that works down that hierarchy, and I completely agree. So I would absolutely, first I'd test it, so I'd mm-hmm. go a month and test, because the proof will be in the pudding. But number two, I think there's huge value there. So, um, and I saw somebody else speak about this, so I, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, you know, kind of lifting this, but I, it made total sense where it was, you know, uh, this is a bad example because it's not your business, but a shoe, right? You know, mm-hmm. So you go on Amazon and you try to buy the shoe, then you go on Yahoo and what's in the, what's in the banner about the shoe, of course. But then if you retarget in a systematic fashion, then you could go, then you can retarget that to the next time they go and it says, feet hurt, you know, I know you're you know, like looking for that new pair of shoes, and then the next one, a6 is the most comfortable. I'm just making up. I don't know why I think about right. A6. It's bizarre. But anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> go big, on big runner, are you, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> but you can build that story. I think there's a huge opportunity for mm. building that story and retargeting, mm. specifically related to the third parties. So when you, but And Facebook actually makes that super easy. Mm-hmm. which is really nice. Like you don't, I mean, you can use perfect audience and things like that, of course, as time goes on and make it even better. But Facebook will give you a rudimentary fashion for that. I, I'm huge on it, and I'm huge on Facebook Facebook Live until they kill it. So don't, algorithm wait, Facebook. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean until they kill it? What? what? Because they'll, they'll, of course, they, they're they boosting the algorithm right now for Facebook Live. Oh, yeah. So it's the, completely pay. disproportionate to a post, yeah. and they're doing that to get you hooked on using Facebook Live. So then eventually they'll kill it, meaning not that they will end the service, but they'll completely make it pay to play just as your posts are. Right. So, I, I, and that's what I want right to pick up. The getting is good. Yes. <laughs> Matt and I do. Uh, we, like, I, I, I have, a day, I have five, four to five you know, a week Facebook Live, like an hour long with massive inter, 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 interactment. Interactment? Engagement. It's not even a word. I'm making up new shit as I go. <laughs> Dyslexia and I'm a, ma- I'm a word uh, genius. Wow. <laughs> that was impressive. All right. That's, no, but, I think, man, you're getting tired. we got another podcast to go, ah, Greg. I know. What are we, <laughs> we going to do on Thursday? Yeah, take a break. We're in a Trader Joe's, get you some carrot juice or whatever already, it is. That you, I already you know. had some. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's not the worst good. Part. Wow, this is you on carrot juice. All right. Oh, you get a lot of interaction. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, 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 I think it's a great idea. It's. I mean, it's. It, to me, it's Jeff. It's evidence that like, and you you point this out, and I I, it, I think you glossed over it, and I want to make sure that people really get this, which is, uh, your funnel seems to be send people to the content, let them engage with the content for free, and then you know that out of the people that engage with the content, you're going to convert those because the content is so good and there's an offer on your site that that will convert them into your funnel. You don't just reach out with Facebook ads to a cold audience and say, hey, here's my free chunk of value. You should pop in your email right this second. So it's from what I understand, it, you've lengthened that funnel and you're driving people and giving them value first, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. I don't think there's a bad. I don't think it's bad to lengthen that funnel. I mean, obviously, like you know, you want to minimize steps and everything like that. But if the if the content is there, and especially in B two B, a lot of times it's the trickle, right? It's not like that first time they see you or hear of you that they're going to buy. Almost all of us 
are building out those back end automations. We're getting a lot of touches on people as you build that trust and as you build that expertise. So I never mind lengthening that because number one, if they never become a member, they're still going to get great value hopefully, which just bolsters my brand when they talk to the next person. But sure. in the best case scenario, over time they're like, yeah, this dude knows what he's talking about. I built the trust. Now I'm coming in. I already feel like I have a relationship with the guy because he's done X, Y, and Z. Kind of gets back to that, you know, the, the hierarchy and reciprocity, of course. Yeah. But it's really building that throughout time. I just I've never seen it go wrong as long as you're willing to go the long play. Yeah, yeah, I, and that's I agree, the key. Agree a ton with you on that on that right there. But so many people want the flash in the pan. Just give me my give me my couple cents. Give me my opt in. But they're not willing to like you said give the value first. Give and then take. Because they will give you more than you can ever imagine if you're bringing value to their life prior to you asking for anything from them. Yep. Yeah. I love it. All right. So uh, so it's very, pretty much it, it, the easiest way to find you, theevidencebasedchiropractor.com, and any other social network slash theevidencebasedchiropractor.com, <laughs> uh, which is awesome. I love that. Uh, yeah. So and, and the book that we're talking about is uh, it's not how good you are. It's how good you want to be by Paul Arden. So go out, get that book. It, it was a phenomenal, short, easy read. Big, big, uh, like as Greg likes to say, big buttons and colors. It was... Uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> <laughs> lots of lots of pictures. Uh, very short read, but high impact, which is awesome. So I'm glad we covered that book. I, I had kind of uh, that's like a hidden, like you said, uh, Jeff. It's like a hidden gem. Yep. Oh, Jeff. By the way, I just ordered it on Amazon. It'll be here within two days. So I am very happy. I'll take it on it's my like trip. Six bucks. It's like six that's bucks. Right. It was. It was six sixty <laughs> out the door. <laughs> with, with shipping. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, sadly, we have reached the end of our time. We could go on uh, on about marketing for a long, long time with Jeff. So make sure to connect with him. Connect with him on his website through email. Uh, connect with him on LinkedIn, whatever the case is. Uh, but make sure that you connect with him. He's got a, a lot to share. And especially if you're in the chiropractic industry, definitely connect with him and check out the evidence-based chiropractor. So with that said, we will bring and uh, this one to a close. Put a nice little bow on this episode. Remember to subscribe on YouTube so you get the video versions. And then if you want the audio versions, make sure to subscribe subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher. So, Greg, Jeff, gentlemen, thank you so much. Matt, thank you. Jeff, thanks. <laughs>